I'm going to kind of do a great segue into being mindful and to um, also learning more so to how to cope with particular things of that nature. Um, our next speaker is Kiana Studstill. She's a certified life and mindfulness coach who transformed her life by healing from trauma and embracing her self-worth. Kiana is committed to helping others achieve their saying by teaching mindfulness and the importance of self-love. So without further ado, let's give Kiana a warm welcome, you guys. Welcome, Kiana. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, let me share my screen here. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Kiana Studstill. Kiana D is my podcast name, Kiana Danielle, and I am talking on the art of self-care. A little about myself. I am an educator um, at heart and by trade. I have been educating for over 12 years now, um, various grades from preschool up until now. I am teaching both middle and high school sciences. I am also a certified mindfulness coach and a podcaster as well on Mask Off Crowns On. Um, I fell into this journey through various traumas and things that occurred in my life at an early age that caused me to become suicidal, depressed. Um, around my 21, 22 years and beyond, I was definitely a overthinking, people-pleasing um, young lady, and it caused me a lot of mental health issues. It caused me a lot of depression, a lot of sad days. And because of that, that journey, it caused me to go down my own journey of self-love, self-care, um, throughout the years, it has been deepened through various courses and um, mentors, and, and it has just developed into a love and a passion of mine. Um, not only do I try to educate in the school as far as, you know, books wise, but I also try to mentor my students in their own mental and self-care love journeys as well. Um, as we continue, what is self-care? So the definition of self-care is the practice of taking action to persevere or improve one's health. The practice of taking care, taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. So self-care as a whole comes from an area of awareness of self, of who you are, and exactly what your needs are. Um, if you don't know what you need, how can you best take care of yourself, right? And um, on a spiritual level, on you know a deeper level, we all know what we need, right? Our inner beings know what we need. However, accessing that um, can become lost between again traumas, um, life situations, as as Ashmita um, just spoke on grief, which definitely hit me um, hard. Um, as well. So I understand those stages of grief. I understand the need for self-care and self-love in those moments, right? It's truly the building blocks of what keeps you going. So what does it look like? Self-care goes beyond the basics of just pedicure, spa days, shopping, and I must admit, even traveling, even though that is my number one go-to <laughs> personally, but it is a means of full acceptance of self, your mental, physical, spiritual, financial, yourself as a whole. Again, what do you need? And by focusing your goals and, you know, things based on your heart's desires, your health needs, and again, yeah, and so forth, again, it builds that foundation of self-care, self-love. Setting and sticking to boundaries that especially goes with our social emotional skills. Um, again, I was a people please, pleaser, always trying to be there for others. Always, I even had at one point a schedule of when I was going to call people, what time I was going to call people, just because I didn't want anyone to feel as if I did not love them or if I was not giving enough. So I've always tried to go over and beyond 
in that capacity, even when we all know the phone works both ways, right? So that was a part of my journey as well. And most importantly, self-care definitely looks different for everyone. We all have different wants. We all have different needs. And again, by knowing yourself and what you need, then you will, again, give yourself what you need, right? So myths about self-care. Self-care is an indul- is an indulgence, meaning self-care includes making Meaningful self-care includes making mindful changes in patterns of thoughts and behaviors that do not contribute to your well-being. So just because you went to a spa does not mean it's going to give you that upliftment or the things that your body needs. Spas are great. I am definitely not knocking them. I love a good spa day, but it definitely goes beyond just going to get your pedicures and manicures, right? What are your true physical health needs have you been to a doctor how much water are you getting in um are you taking care of you know to make sure you're getting your vitamins through fruits veggies things like that again really getting to the core of your health needs right self-care is selfish absolutely wrong (laughs) when you make time for yourself and get sufficient rest and exercise you feel more energetic and will be able to do more for yourself as well as those around you so again being able to say no being able to turn that do not disturb on on your phone when you know you need to be in bed i personally i stick to that wholeheartedly i have to be up at 4 35 o'clock to be energetic and ready to give all of my love, all of my time, and all of my attention to my students every single day. If I come in half-baked, they know it automatically. So I try my best to make sure I'm in bed on time, I get up, um, refresh, you know, shower, all that good stuff, feeling the best that I can so I can give 100% of myself, right? Self-care is a one-time experience. Again, we've already gotten the pattern. It will never be a one-time fix-all. Um, I feel like people were, you know, asking for a cure-all with um, Ashmita and grief, and there is no, there is no band-aid that will permanently, you know, heal that part of yourself. And with self-care, it's a continuous journey because even as you fix one part of yourself, there's other parts that need to be worked on. And as we go through different things like grief, job loss, loss of home, whatever the case may be, we continue to get jerked by life and self-care helps us to stay balanced and continue to focus on the things that matter, our health, our mental health, our spiritual health, um, our financial needs. Again, but within a time, within a framework, right? Within the right mental capacity about it, perfect word, the right perspective about it. And that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you afloat and keep you grounded as you continue to go through your experience. So it is definitely a lifelong process, not a one day process. Self-care is time consuming. Self-care does not require you to take out a huge chunk of your time of your busy, busy day. We all have jobs. Most of us have families, husbands, children, uh, church affiliations, uh, nonprofit affiliations, whatever the case may be. We all have very, very busy schedules. But making time and scheduling time for self-care has to be of the utmost importance because, again, how can you give to all these other sectors of life if you are not taking care of yourself first and foremost? You cannot give from an empty cup. Awareness and self-care. Increased awareness leads to a deeper and more meaningful self-care practice. Ways to become more aware and mindful, journaling, intentional breath work, exercise, um, meditation, again, counseling with either your pastor, uh, actual therapist, whatever, you know, works best for you. But using all of the avenues to get to know yourself the absolute best. You should be your best friend, your number one supporter, your number one rooter, which means you should know yourself the best. And it takes time to know who you are at each stage of development in life. So you have to keep constantly going back to that, who am I? What, you know, who am I right now? 
what experiences have changed me up until this point? And by knowing those things, you know, again, what what has affected my health for the last six months? You know, different things like that. But really and truly getting to know who you are, mind, body, and soul. Benefits of health self-care. Of course, it's going to lead to a happy, more joyful life, healthier connections with peers, co-workers, less stress, lower blood pressure, increase in health and overall well-being, and a more productive and well-balanced life. When you truly know who you are through awareness and self-care, again, your boundaries won't be broken. You'll know what you stand for. Um, and by that, again, the different things that knock us and you know try to um, knock us off our pivot in life won't have much of an effect because, again, you're grounded in who you are and you're taking care of who you are, right? Mind, body, and soul again. Mm -hmm. Types of self-care. We have mental, spiritual, physical, social, and financial, right? Our mental is, of course, everything that comes from our brains, everything that affects our nervous system, everything that affects how we think, how we believe, um, and our mind frame and our perspective on different situations and different occasions can either make us or break us, right? We've all been in situations where we've possibly burnt bridges or, you know, have reacted in a manner that, you know, the situation didn't warrant because, again, we were in our heads, we were overthinking, um, different things of that nature. And so by taking care of your mental health and your spiritual health, those are the top two, especially for me and through, you know, through other researches as well. Taking care of your mental and spiritual health is what's going to keep you the most grounded. Of course, I am a holistic believer, so I know we have to take care of all of our parts of self, but taking care of your mental and spiritual will lead to you taking care of your physical, social, financial, emotional, and all of your other needs. Um, some ways to help with your mental health journey is through journaling. As Miss Lisa said earlier, reading. I love reading a good book. It transports you to worlds unknown. It gives you different perspectives, insights, um, playing games, mental strengthening games, or even just stress relieving games, whatever, you know, gives you that moment of peace and, and um, relaxation, right? We want to give our nervous system that calm that it needs, that relaxation that it needs. Our spiritual um, needs, you can pray. That is my number one go to any and through all situations. I am going to pray. Um, everyone has different religions. Everyone has different spiritual beliefs. But talking to a higher power, no matter what you call it, um, again, lets you get back into the state of knowing that this world is beyond ourselves and that there are going to be some things that are out of our control and the best way to do it is to leave it in our creator's hands right um reading the bible or other um spiritual um forms of of, of books um self-motivating books um books by you know again bibliographies you know different people that inspire you whatever the case may be, but just tapping into that spiritual world, right? Um, again, other spiritual ma materials and meditation. Meditation has been one of the best additives to my life to date because it gives me that moment of stillness. It gives me that moment of calmness and quiet when it's most needed, right? When my brain is overracking on whatever situation, when I am starting to, again, feel like I am losing control, meditation grounds me back into the spiritual back into the moment and allows me to freely move on into what's <clears throat> next in my day excuse me um our physical self-care needs of course exercising keeping yourself hydrated proper nutrition all of that goes into taking care of your physical health um for me in my physical health journey i used to be over 360 pounds I had lost a quite a bit of it before my um, car accident in 2020 where I messed up both of my legs. And here I am in 2024 still trying to get back to that um, previous physical state, right? Um, 
again, a lot happened for everyone in 2020. I lost my mother as um, as well as Afmita, but I lost mine in 2020. So a lot of emotional, a lot of um, <clears throat> physical things were neglected for a while as I was going through my own personal grief process. But um, through, it all, through it all, I've gotten back to, you know, focusing on me and focusing on all the aspects of what I need. So again, balanced meals, all of that good stuff. So your social self-care, again, making time with friends and family with boundaries. If you're too tired, don't go. I love you, sis. Love you, bro. Love you, cuz. Whoever the case may be, I'll catch you guys next time. If your mental and spiritual is not there, if you're, you know, in a a hurt place and you don't feel, especially if you don't feel safe with these particular people, don't go, right? Make sure you are protecting the core of who you are. But spending time with loved ones, those you trust, those you care for, it can be uh, a boost of um, emotional support. It can be a boost in your self-esteem at times and just give you that overall um, energy boost that you may need at times as well. Um, Healthy communication, learning how to express your needs without being overly angry or because, again, anger is going to come, sadness is going to come. These are all emotions that our body needs to let us know what we need, right? And by accepting those emotions, but expressing them in a healthy way, that is what's going to cause you to bridge and build connections versus burn those connections. Because, again, we all don't have the same perspectives. We all don't have the same realities. So learning how to communicate with people of other thought processes and still learning how to come to a common ground is most definitely beneficial for your social and emotional health. Active listening. Ooh, I tell you, this is one thing, you know, especially as an educator <laughs> that, you know, I am still trying to see in the world because, you know, with our youth and even with our adults, everyone seems to want to get their voice out. They want their voice to be heard, you know, especially in this empowerment generation. And I, I full heartedly um, support it. We are all of our voices are important and need to be heard. However, if you are not an active listener and can respond, then it's a one sided conversation, which means growth is not happening. You can say, you know, your opinion all you want, but if you cannot actively listen, hear, and analyze what someone else is saying, then it's a null point, right? Our financial needs and self-care, um, budgeting, investing. Um, or your resume, whatever the case may be, but just doing those things. If you know you want to earn, you know, however, hundreds of millions or whatever the case may be, then go out and do your research, you know, make those steps to get to your goal, right? Only you know what you desire, only you know what you want. So you have to be the one to do it. All right, takeaways. Remember that self-care is different for everyone because we are all different with different needs, desires, and dreams. What works for one person doesn't work for us all. So take the time to really get to know yourself and give it what it needs. No one will ever take care, take care of you better than yourself. And I do want to add to that, to make sure that on this self-care journey, you realize that everyone else is on their own self-care journey. And as you are giving yourself that grace, are you as you are giving yourself the things that you need, make sure you are also giving grace um, to others as they are learning what they need for themselves as well. Okay, for this Breathe With Me segment, I'm um, going to play a song by Beautiful Chorus, excuse me, and India Ari, and it's, oops, excuse me, it's trying to start already. Um, and it's just a beautiful reminder of who we are, right? We don't have to be anything or anyone um, other than who we are right now. And to be very present in the moment, knowing that we do have all that we need and continuing to remind us um, as a reminder of that. So as I play the song, we're going to intentionally breathe together and just really... Um, get grounded within this moment as we continue on with 
this conference and as we finish out, we're just going to ground ourselves in a moment. And I hope this, if it has not already been a part of your daily routine, becomes a part of your daily routine as a focus, as a, again, a grounder, and just reminding you that you are always in the perfect place that, um, at the perfect time, okay? Everyone can sit up nice and tall in their seats or whatever's comfortable. You want to close your eyes. Try not to be anywhere but here. And as we breathe deep, we want to count to four. And when we breathe out, we want to count to six. Breathe in. So again, that was just a quick reminder that we are all, we are light, we are love, and most importantly, we are here and we are now. 
Everything that we desire is here and now. Everything we want is here and now. Everything we need is here and now. So giving grace to yourselves, to others, always being grateful and thankful for what we have and what we're going to continue to receive. Let's continue to walk in love. Let's continue to walk in self-care, giving ourselves the absolute best so that we that way we may continue to give that to each other, right? And that way our world will continue to heal. Um, some resources and other things you can check out. Uh, the Art of Extreme Self-Care by Cheryl Richardson. Radical Self-Care by Angela D. Coleman. A few websites, mindful.org, psychologytoday.org. But there are a plethora, a plethora of resources out there. Um, if these don't work for you, please go out and find what truly works for you on your self-love, self-care journey. Thank you guys for listening. Again, I am Kiana D. And um, my giveaway is a free session, a 30-minute session for those who may like. Um, also, um, for those business owners, if you have an ad put together, I will also play, a, um, play one free ad on an episode of my podcast, which is, again, Mask Off, Crowns On. Again, thank you guys for listening. Stay in touch. Here's my email, maskoffcrownzone at gmail.com. You can also find me at on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok as well. I forgot to put that, um, but maskoff underscore crowns on. And again, thank you guys. Yay. Thank you, Kiana. Do you guys have any questions for Kiana? You can... any, and now the screen um, time for any questions that you guys may have as well. Yes, here we go. I was I, I had a uh, uh, technical malfunction. Hi, Kiana. How are you? I'm well. How about yourself? Excellent. Thank you so much for that song. I actually have that in a couple other therapeutic songs, and that's one of my go-tos when I'm having a moment. So I really appreciate that. So listen, when I was diagnosed with PTSD, uh, one of the first things they tried to take me through was mindfulness uh, and and quiet music listening, et cetera, like in breathing that you just took us through, right? In my young, ignorant state, my first answer and reply was absolutely not. This don't apply to black.